Cup. Up. Two games played today in the competition. The West Indies took on Pakistan at the MCG in Melbourne, and Sri Lanka had to play against Zimbabwe in New Plymouth in New Zealand. There would have been a third game played today, and not in the competition itself, but as a warm-up fixture for South Africa against a Sir Donald Bradman 11. However, that game was rained out, and I'm sure that's great disappointment to the South Africans. Undoubtedly, they did need some more match practice before going into that big encounter on Wednesday when they play against Australia at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Well, let's move into the Benson Hedges World Cup, shall we? Look at the two sides playing today. West Indies against Pakistan. Looking at the Pakistan side, Interesting to see that, of course, Waka Yunus has gone home. He's uh, injured and won't take any part in the Benson Hedges World Cup. Uh, shame, I'm sure, for them because they were expecting great things from that right arm fast bowler. Also missing today is a very experienced captain, Imram Khan. 162 games, of course, he's played in one-day internationals. However, in there is Javid Miandad, who's played over 180 one-day internationals at the age still of just 34, a lot of more cricket left in him. The West Indies side is a, is a very much a, a new look team indeed, although of course there is some tremendous experience in there with Malcolm Marshall having played 123 games already, and uh, Richie Richardson who played over 144 games for the West Indies. New look side indeed with David Williams taking over as the wicketkeeper from Geoffrey Dujon and David Williams only played nine games in his international career so far and of course young Brian Lara has also played just eight one-day internationals going into this encounter. So the game then, all set and poised for an interesting encounter at the MCG. We're going to pick up the action in the second over with Pakistan at the crease. And it's good morning to David Gore. Ambrose straight past the outside edge there, Rami's right at bat. Uh, following on from the opening over from Malcolm Marshall, a nice polished over, three runs off it. And Ambrose now the tour of the two. Slightly widest delivery, let's be fair, Rami's Raj won't be very happy having followed that one so wide. That's a good shot. Long chase here for Harper, but I don't think he'll get there. All those long strides just pull it back. And a great return. Roger Harper coming back into the West Indies team and immediately making an impact. Roger Harper has been well renowned for a long, long time as one of the world's great fielders. Uh, over six foot tall there, those legs do move very quickly and uh, he made a lot of ground there. Saving one run for the West Indies. Classic throw. And there, Ramiz Raja's World Cup statistics. An average of 51. He won't be unhappy at all if he averages the same or better in this competition and again the same sort of strike rate he's always been uh, a dasher as an opening batsman and a high score there 113 against England and that's a beautifully picked up shot off the legs for a boundary the first one of the innings the first chance really that either batsman has had to put bat on ball beautifully timed he's just flicked it off his legs there Malcolm Marshall straying slightly down the leg side leg side there it goes from leg stump safely over the infield and very quickly down to the boundary oh good shot straight back down the pitch he'll probably roll into the fence no it won't Probably run for though. That's well done. Good straight hit. You know what uh, Ramiz Raju was doing there? I think his thigh pad might have come loose as he was running. He was uh, not running flat out as we see Kirtley just get a finger on that. And uh, if you watch Ramiz Raja here as he's running, I think about the third and the fourth run, he starts grabbing at the, uh, there he is, in fact, in the first run, he's grabbing at the thigh pad. In the air and into the gap. That's running away down towards the boundary at extra cover, slowing up as it gets towards the rope down there and into the rope it goes. There's that area down there as the rope's off. 
because there's some new grass being put in grass down there affected by all the building works that have been going on and the Pakistanis here yeah, very very happy yes he looks a pretty fair uh, player first time I've seen Amir Sohail certainly not uh, bothered by the pace bowlers He's, uh, he hasn't taken a backward step and uh, a couple of occasions when he's seen one there that he's like the look of he knows what to do with the bat And that's a good shot all the way along the ground through the gap at mid-wicket running away towards the boundary this will get the boundary too yes four more the pakistan is beginning to cut loose here at the mcg lovely shot there from amir sahail tell you what uh, right he wouldn't have dispatched that one any better john wright of new zealand a very good player through the onside and uh, i guess that most left-handers like them there uh, he's really starting to come out of his shell. So Hale. Winston Benjamin is coming into the attack. Good pitch, yeah, fast outfield. So Hale back for the second. This could be out. Oh, bad throw. Umpire Randall says not out. The throw was very wide, brilliantly picked up by Williams. There was nothing much he could do about that. It was wide. It was on the half body. He gathered it, but he had to bring it back a long way. Ambrose is uh, very, very athletic, as I said, and a, and a good throw there would have had uh, Sahail. It's straight up in the air. Who's going to take it? Logie's got him. That's the first wicket to fall. Sohail out court, trying to pull that one to mid-wicket. Really trying to get Pakistan off to a flyer. Not a bad start anyhow. He didn't middle it, straight up in the air, and little Gus Logie did the rest. Yes, so he's an impressive character, Amir Sohail, and he was certainly showing uh, some good form there in the end. Gus Logie taking that catch comfortably. Winston Benjamin gets the first breakthrough, Pakistan 1 for 45. The new batsman is M. Zaman Huck. So Harper starts his second over, just short of Logie, and through him, he really is having a, a disastrous time out there today with the ball eluding him to his left and his right and a few fumbles. That's Logie, as we know, one of the truly outstanding fielders in the game. Not today. Carl Hooper and he'll bowl in tandem with Roger Harper. chase out here for Keith Arthur and he's very quick over the outfield usually has a good strong throw but the West Indies seem to be playing with a bar of soap in the outfield today it's uh, eluding them more often than not and he had difficulty in grabbing it but it was always three Hooper just straying a little wide of the off stump there giving the bats some room to cut and the wide open spaces of the MCG there giving Arthur in a long long chase very important with the Pakistan batsman with their run rate to the over stage he tries that and just get over the short mid wicket there's a sweeper out there two more and they'd be aware with nine wickets in hand the 30 over stage you'll have to be consistent with your run rate there's a few gaps there the maidens and ones and twos probably not good enough now to just going away from about 24 down and just 15 down again just with their run rate Yeah, that's out. Oh, that's the end of it. Beaten by the change of pace there. He threw it up. A little bit of drift. It was straight to Carl Hooper. Inzeman's out. And that's a wicket the West Indies needed. He's very welcome, not only to uh, Richie Richards and the skipper, but also to Roger Harper. It's quite a straightforward catch. Carl uh, Hooper. Pakistan now 2 for 97 in the 30. Javed Meandad, the acting captain for Pakistan today, a tremendous record, one of the world's best batsmen in all types of cricket. Comes to the crease with the ball of the second wicket. It's good running. He has an experienced player in with him out there, Ramesh Raja. 
Now, Javed is uh, a great chatterer out in the centre, but he's a very busy player and a wonderful player. A wonderful player to get this whole thing moving. It's just wide of Williams, and it'll be four runs. Frustration there for Malcolm Marshall. That was a genuine nick. Robert me and Dad always plays the full-blooded shot when he has a go at it. A lot of bat on it, and even though it was a thick edge. David Williams really threw himself, but it really was more like a second slip catch. Ramiz Raja he's been the rock of the innings so far he's just not had the opportunities today to, to really put back to ball very few chances to, to reach the boundary but at least 71 not out he's still doing a fair job for Pakistan good shot into the gap very well placed and that's going to race to the fence Beautiful shot, just a bit short that delivery from Benjamin. That's the sixth four of the innings. This is where Javid Mian that is so good. Very good improviser with the cricket bat. Giving himself just a little bit of room there, Winston Benjamin dropping it slightly short. But he's timed that shot so nicely, so beautifully. It's gone just wide of the fielder and beaten the sweeper, who's already 20, 30 metres in from the boundary. And there it goes down to the fence. Oh, that's Sart. No, it's not. Looks as if it nicked something and it's gone for four. Four runs. That went flying away and Javid now having another chat with the... Uh, for me, he's down there. Big smile on Jarvis his face. Javid's loving that. <laughs> Whatever he said before, it had no, no effect whatsoever. Rami's getting in a fearful tangle with that. He seemed to have made up his mind early on that he wanted to try and pull this ball extremely wicked and got all sorts of wrong positions confused David Williams as well just out just missed the outstretched hands and it still counts as four runs doesn't matter how beautiful it was it's four runs so there we are everything quite consistent until the last over well with the, the quest for runs in these closing stages the Pakistani is that they need a couple more overs like that to set the West Indies a reasonable target Beautifully hit down the ground. Will it get to the boundary? Yes, a magnificent shot. And he's getting that one right off the meat of the bat. Straight down the ground for four. That's the end of the over. Two for 196. Two overs to go. Malcolm Marshall about to start the second last up. Fieldsman spread far and wide. Oh, this is a huge ground, not all of them on the boundary. Oh, he's got that away too. What a good shot that is. That ball would have hit, I reckon, around about off stump. Javid right across, knowing, as David Gower has pointed out, that he had to get it away fine on the next side, and he did it perfectly. This is always the risk, of course. And the ball there, Malcolm Marshall, just too full, trying to get the ball in the block hole. Straight, just marginally on the leg stump, but Javid's moved across, he's created the space. It doesn't take long the ball to reach the boundary at fine leg they're just in front of the sudden stand the wide open space has been used to full extent by the Pakistani batsman so there it is his strike rate 89 runs per 100 balls he's on 49 and he's now got 50 well played job at Meandad captaining Pakistan because Imran Khan has problems with his shoulders and he certainly lifted the run rate it's a great little captain's innings from Javid Meandad there. Ramiz Raja is part of the other end, has struggled to keep the run rate up for Pakistan, but Javid's come in there, he's played his shots, he's improvised, he's made the most of it, he's used the pace of the ball, and he's, uh, he's got his runs quickly. That's his 41st half century in one-day internationals. That's a great shot, magnificent shot to extra cover, running down towards the boundary, into the fence she goes. What a magnificent shot. This is a little gem of an innings. 
and the Pakistanis are all out of their seats. Well, it's Ramiz Raja now joining in the act. He's seen his captain put back to ball, and this has split the field perfectly through extra cover there. Kept his head down. All the follow through of the bat. A little flick again. He's done it again. Magnificent shot. A little flick down a fine leg. Isn't he cheeky? Two for 212. This is the last over. Ambrose is going to bowl it. He's not easy to get away. I reckon uh, the best thing to do here would be for Ramiz to try and get a single and let Jarvis do the work. exactly what they've done. Just have a look at the shot from Jarvid Meandad. The last ball of Marshall's over. Now he got it away to fine leg. This is an incredible shot. You can see how wide of off stump the ball is there. It's a foot wide of the off stump. Perfect place for Malcolm Marshall there. He can't really blame himself but Jarvis beautifully timed. Gets right across and works it to long leg. to get that one away fine too but a bit of bounce there and I think it was the slower ball too well Kirtley Ambrose perhaps not quite as easy as Malcolm Marshall to get away there again Jarvis going to the offside the ball's bounced up he's got a bit of body in the way of that as well well I mean he's Raja on strike and on 99 his 100 in 6th century a little slow I think when one considers the batting they've got he's happy about it whether or not he scored those runs quickly enough to get his side a victory time will tell well at least he can be proud of the 100 he struggled for some of that innings to, to find his touch to find his timing and only at the end of the day will we know how, how valuable this, is, this, is, this has been Anyway, Hunter's never a bad effort in one-day cricket. The strike rate of 64.3 is consistent with most of his career. And uh, it just remains to be seen now how, uh, how many more runs they can just nudge off the rest of this over of Curly Ambrose. And that was the first 100 against the West Indies in a World Cup match. He's hit that off the middle of the bat. He wants one. There's going to be a run out. No, it's not. <laughs> Getting himself in a terrible tangle. Williams couldn't quite get to the stumps in time. The ball missed the stumps. It would have been run out by Miles. I have to say there was no danger on today's ball with that ball hitting the stumps anyway. So uh, Pakistan and Jarvid comfortably back in again. Not a problem there. West Indies have been a bit sloppy in the field. Oh, he's got back. He's gone. He's hit it straight to backward point. No ball called. Well, I think Jarvid was a little unlucky. We normally see Ambrose smiling, but that's not a smile. I don't think that one was over the top of shoulders in a, over his shoulders in a normal standing position. Let's have another look. Well, Job is certainly smiling. He's loving that. It's, it's a close decision, that one. Very close decision. He's uh, only managed to get it, cut it back just behind square there. And uh, Kirtley Ambrose showing signs of severe confusion. Two balls to go. Got the way on the onside to get two here as well. They might try and test him for the third, in which case uh, they could get overthrows. They're settling for two. Yes, uh, the interesting thing about that particular playing condition is that if the ball is in that area, I mean, really, Java did have a fair shot at it. I think it's a little silly, but it's over his head, it would be a bit different. But over his shoulders, it's a fair shot. He hit it straight to Fieldsman. I mean, he could have hit it over his head. I think the bowlers get very angry about situations like that, and I think with some justification too. So this is the last ball. In he comes. It's a slow one down the leg side. Is it wide? No, it's not. David was way outside off stump and on his knees. Yes, you'll have to settle for that. Well, what a little gem of an innings from Jarvid Meandad. He's actually helped the Pakistan side lift their total. 
because at one stage they looked as if they weren't going to get nearly enough runs. Hi, I'm Mark Vinica of the Southern Sun Inlet Cycling Team, and I'm here to show you the official 1992 Argus Pick and Pay Cycle to Souvenir Range. It's available in all sizes. There are caps, these great sweatshirts, golf shirts, cycling shirts, great looking tracksuit pants, and cycle travel bags. Well, I've got mine. Make sure you get yours at registration and at the fair. Oh, I nearly forgot. T shirts and shorts are also available. The Benson and Hedges World Cup Cricket Update is on Mnet Supersport tomorrow at 9 p.m. He is the cheekiest and one of the best I've ever seen in all the years I've been watching cricket, Javid, me and Dad. He pulled that innings around and he never stopped giving cheek out there, never stopped chatting to the opposition and frustrating them. This is the way they finished up Pakistan after looking at one stage as though they would be lucky to get to 200. Javed Meehan had 57 from 61 balls faced. Ramiz Raja reached his 100, 102 from 158, and it was a good effort, two for 220. And the bowling figures for West Indies, they certainly weren't aided in the field. The fielding, I thought, was very sloppy indeed. Marshall, 53 from 10 overs, and Ambrose, 40 from 10, the two experienced players. And Winston Benjamin, 10 overs, one for 49. Carl Hooper, none for 41, and Roger Harper, one for 33. Those two spinners did an excellent job for uh, Richie Richardson and thoroughly justified their choice in the side. So it's uh, not an easy task for the West Indies, even though it looks as though it's going to be a low-scoring game. Here they are making their first attempt at it. Oh, a bold, a magnificent delivery, that one. All over the place, I didn't know where it was one of those moments when you're glad you're in the commentary box because Wasa Macram is very, very sharp. He can swing it back into the right hand. He goes wide and pitches and holds its line and only cuts him in half. Beautifully bowled. Just sheer pace. I'll keep job it. Right arm over the wicket to the left-hander. Haynes has the top one. He's out there at the moment. 148 and that was a magnificent shot by Lara through midwicket yes Brian Lara has that touch of class he's a very wristy flashy batsman but when he times the ball it really does come off the meat of the bat he really likes to work it on the onside if it's round about middle and off stump and he whipped that away and that was beautifully placed and timed it was always going to be for delightful stroke yes they've got off to a pretty good start here considering the total they're chasing Quiet is still 4.48, but they're not falling behind. They're not building up over five. That's very important. Yes, I think uh, if they can just keep it ticking over at this pace without losing wickets, I'll be in business. In the air, what a good shot that was. Not very short. Back onto his back foot. Whack over the top of mid-wicket's head. And thud into the fence down there. Nine runs off the over. Beautiful shot, Brian Lara. No wicket for 36. Brian Lara, the magnificent, I suppose you'd call it, oh, sinking pull shot, but it really uh, wasn't quite a pull shot. Whatever name you want to put on it, it was very well timed. Just get off the ground. And we have a, a change in bowling here. We have Wazem Haider. Just short. Rather loose shot from... Brian Lara almost carried to the mid-off fielder. Yes, he hit that pretty well. Brian Lara. But uh, hitting it on the rise, he got it in the air and mid-off probably could have done a little bit more. Didn't really moved towards the ball. Jarvis now going back a little in the uh, he was in the short cover position he's going back now to a traditional cover position he's got it through that'll be four lovely shot from Lara that's his fourth boundary and he's been the one responsible for the West Indies acceleration 
really is a beautiful timer of the ball, Brian Lara. Doesn't have to uh, play too many reckless shots. He's got so many good ones that he can play without, uh, without any danger. Doesn't have to play uh, reckless shots or risky shots. Oh, that's a fine shot. Another four for Lara. That's his fifth. why he doesn't have to play risky shots it really is a beautiful time of the ball and he's quite a joy to watch not quite as stylish as uh, Sachin Tendulkar he's certainly got the timing of Tendulkar perhaps not quite the skill but uh, he is a very talented young player it away it was just short and he pulled it through the mid wicket area for another four that's his sixth and that raises the West Indies 50 this is a pretty tough uh, initiation for Wazim Haider playing in his first international so another change Ijaz Ahmed left arm medium pacer There was a shot of catch it. It was wide of the fielder, who is not happy. Just indicating to his captain that if he had been at backward square leg rather than forward, the ball would have dropped straight into his lap. There was some discussion as to where he should have been. Might be a little harder for the left-hand bowler to bowl to the left-hand batsman. Oh, magnificent stroke. That's the best we've seen so far from Lara. He really hammered it away. That really was a magnificent shot. The reason why it's going to be tougher for the left-hand bowler is uh, coming from around the wicket with that round arm action to the right-hander. He's coming at an awkward angle to Desi Haynes but uh, it's not quite the same to the left-hander. He's going to find it harder to get the ball online and not give him a bit of room outside off stump. So the West Indies moving along very smoothly here. Left arm spin from the north end and a drop chance. Evidence of turn there at the southern end. Desi Haynes has pushed forward. It's the thickest edge that's diverted enough to miss Wayne Khan's gloves and that's a lovely stroke as well he's a master of the sweep shot Desmond Haynes and many other shots as well first of all the crashing stroke away past square leg and then that delicate little stroke that just helped it on its way very fine 100 partnership for West Indies all looking very very comfortable in their pursuit of 221 to win and we have spin from uh, both ends Iqbal Sakanda coming in now the leg spinner from the southern end and Brian Lara has reached his half century a lovely knock Greg Chappell will expand on that and in a moment with him will be Tony Greg yes Richie it's been a very impressive performance here by Brian Lara struggled a bit during the World Series Cup early in the summer. Coming out as an opening batsman today, 50 runs, including 7-4, 63 balls, so a very good strike rate of 79.4. Oops, catch it was the call, but it went popping over the keeper's shoulder there. Mohan Khan. Watch it go, it was uh, all too quick for him. A bit of hard work there for the keeper it was from the the bat onto the glove and over the keeper's head he had no chance being down and up to the stumps a difficult chance in the last over from Sahail thick outside edge well, that's going straight up in the air this will be caught by the bowler himself yes he's got oh he's dropped it and what's more that Haynes is 50 
Well, he's just blessed himself. It went straight up in the air. And unfortunately for the bowler, the mid-off was a little far back. So he had to go running backwards. Here it is again. Have a look. Desmond Haynes trying the little flick away on the leg side. He had it in the hand, then tried to almost bring it in. Threw it on the ground. He'd like to throw himself on the ground, and Desi Haynes thinks he's got someone on his side. 27 overs have been bowled now by Pakistan. Iqbal Sikander. The leg spinner going to continue now. Left-handed Brian Lara. Full toss down the ground he goes and it's going to beat the field of two so that's his eighth boundary right off the middle of the bat it's a full toss but uh, he placed it well his timing has been impeccable his placement very good today anyone at this level should be able to handle the full toss catch it the shouts of catch it but it's gone well over the head of the man at midwicket in fact it is beautifully placed he's gone down the track to it has hit it right off the meat of the bat and has quite deliberately hit it over the head of the infielder and he split the two men out on the boundary as he gives the ball a real flick with the wrists just at the last minute he gets a lot of his power from that uh, wrist work Beautiful wrist work there. Now then, Wazim Akram has been brought back into the attack. Ball to Lara. What a good shot that is. That's, uh, we've seen plenty of examples of Brian Lara's great timing. But that was just a little uh, swat. Almost like uh, swatting flies. Wonderful, a wonderful improvisation. If Desmond Haynes is not going to be phased by Wazim Akram dropping it short. But it gives you an idea of the pace at which um, Wajim Akram is bowling, that Haynes was looking for the pull shot just in front of square or even just behind, and all he could do was get it away over mid-on. It's actually a safer pull shot off the left arm over the wicket bowler. Once you start trying to pull him around a square leg, that's when you're likely to get the top edge and get caught somewhere. But if you're hitting it over mid-on, Especially if you were uh, up against someone quick like that and you haven't got time to roll the wrist, it's a lot safer. Timing, timing. Once again, no great effort put into that stroke by Brian Lara, but it fairly raced off the bat. Picked up two runs, just from a, a little defensive push. Very good shot. No great uh, piece of fielding attached to the total amount of cricket. And they will run four. Today's attendance, 14,162. Scattered around this huge stadium. Disappointment all round, and it's none for 175. Well, Brian Lara is not in very good shape, I'm afraid. That last ball from Wazim Akram got him on the toe. He looks to me as though he's wearing soft-toed boots or shoes. That's where it's hit right on the toe. He's too slow getting the back down, bat down. That was how quick it was. 
worst part about those is that uh, they're at their absolute best about one second after the balls hit you on the toe because they don't hurt anywhere near as much as they do about five seconds after they've hit. The way it hit his toe, I reckon that could easily be something quite serious there. better with the boot on at least for walking off the ground Richie Richardson passed Brian Lara on the way out had um, one or two consoling words for him got it through just the deflection from the diving fielder at extra cover but it's gone all the way for four had a lot of wood on it Now we've got another statistic. It's the highest score at the MCG by any team without losing a wicket. For the first wicket. Good deflection. That's a good boundary by Haynes. Very similar to the leg glances we saw from Javed Miandad during the Pakistan innings. Very fine deflection for four. made it nice well run by Desi Haynes there slight misfield at mid-wicket they decided to come back to the second but a good throw came in there over the top of the stumps there's the misfield and here's the throw nicely in and Desi Haynes comfortably back no problem for Stephen Randall so plenty of overs in hand, plenty of wickets in hand, although the West Indies, in effect, have lost Brian Lara for this match with uh, that uh, fearful blow on the toe, which he got from Wazim Akram, forced him to retire hurt. That's beautifully placed and timed, not so well fielded. Desmond Haynes demonstrating exactly how he has got over 7,600 one-day international runs. A little bit of a stiff bat there at uh, mid-off. I think it's uh, his Raja there. Oh. Lovely on drive for four. Right up there in the slot for it. And the West Indies moving very comfor comfortably towards their victory. Well, Akib Javid gave Richardson the sight of the ball before. Again, angled in, just fractionally straighter this time. Richardson makes room for the shot, gets his feet out of the way, the back comes through, beautifully timed, past the man at mid-off. <laughs> Let's put that away as well. It won't go all the way this time. Three more. Square leg signals the no ball. And Akib Jab had just taken the opportunity here, knowing that there's no way Pakistan can get back into this match. Let uh, one or two frustrations loose. Well, there's nothing to lose. And Richard Richardson there, he's seen it all before. He's not too fussed about that, just swayed out of the way of this quite a good bounce, a reasonably straight bounce, so that Akib Jarvis managed to drag out the MCG pitch. One needed for the West Indies' first win of this competition. So two.
two on the walls, two bouncers finishing the game. And uh, the West Indies have won sweepingly by 10 wickets, even though they have lost Brian Lara, who had to retire hurt with that injury. They didn't lose an actual wicket. Desmond Haynes carries his bat and emphasizes his quality as an all-round opening batsman, leading run scorer in one day internationals and he walks off the field not out 93 well what a game and who would have believed that just two wickets would have fallen in that whole day's play there between west indies and pakistan let's have a look then at the scorecard shall we start off with the pakistan side and what a great knock that is by ramiz raja 102 there and uh, I suppose really though the excitement coming in Javid Miandar's innings of uh, 57 of just 61 deliveries. The West Indies bowling, nothing to really write home about, even the great Malcolm Marshall having 53 runs knocked off of his 10 overs and Roger Harper having the best uh, bowling there, one for 33 off of his 10 allotted overs. Interesting to note the extras, I think that's something we must pay attention to, two no balls and five wides, just seven bad deliveries in other words for the West Indies. And that really is something you've really got to keep down in one day cricket because it does not only mean seven extra runs on the board, it also means seven extra deliveries that you allow your side that you're in opposition to to uh, score more runs from. So something we have to look at there. And, uh, well, let's have a look at the West Indies batting. No one getting 100, and you wouldn't believe that, would you, when you saw a scoreline of 221 without loss. And uh, one looks at that and says, there must be someone scored a tonne. But no one did because Brian Lara, of course, retiring hurt, very sore on the old toe there. And uh, nice to hear that commentator say the only good thing about uh, that pain after one second is the fact that it gets worse after five seconds of injury. So one of those things. Desmond Haynes not out on 93, not quite going through to his tongue. And Richie Richardson coming in just to pick up the end there. But he was very aggressive off of his 40 deliveries. Pakistan bowling. Nothing really to write home about either. Was a mushroom. Always still willing to throw a couple at you, a little bit hairy. And uh, interesting to see there, seven wides and three no balls. Obviously, it was such a convincing win. Uh, it didn't really make too much uh, difference on this occasion, but 10 extra deliveries does indeed mean something extra at the end of a match when you think there's nearly two overs extra that you can actually uh, be bowling to your opposition. So there we are then. Two points then for the West Indies. Two very valuable points for the West Indies as they now go to the top of the table with uh, uh, New Zealand, uh, the England side, and of course the Sri Lankan team as well. We're talking about the Sri Lankan side against Zimbabwe today. I think we must have a look at that scorecard that we have got coming in for you scores anyway in that match being played in New Plymouth. Plymouth. And interesting to see that Zimbabwe scored 312 for four at that stage. Surely you must be thinking you are on to a chance of at least winning Andrew Fowler, the wicketkeeper, uh, getting 119 not out. And uh, Andy Waller there, uh, who has always been described as a, as a good batsman, but never with any uh, getting through to the end of it in, in international competition. Doesn't seem to, to always make it, but a good knock on this occasion. And then Sri Lanka going in and getting 314. OK, for the loss of uh, uh, seven wickets, but uh, with four balls remaining that must have been a really exciting match indeed and uh, Ranatunga the man getting the runs for uh, Sri Lanka and uh, good to see indeed uh, an interesting game like that add those two scores up you get 626 runs that incidentally is the highest total ever in Benson Hedges World Cup cricket so uh, well, someone had a little joke with me early on in this competition and said maybe we'll get a Zimbabwe Sri Lanka final. I don't think they come probably better than that in the game as it looks at this moment. So there we are. That's the game coming through. Highlights of that game for you. It was uh, tomorrow night. It was not covered in uh, live coverage by Television New Zealand. However, I do know they had news cameras there. So we're hopefully getting a little highlight package for you tomorrow night at 9 o'clock on our Benson Hedges World Cup update for you. First over, the keeper takes the catch.